Good evening. You are listening to this FM Radio Nigeria. The program is as a scientist. This program is basically initiated to introduce the public to scientists and get scientists to talk about their research as well as emphasize on the relevance of science in long time um, development of the societies. We have a guest in the studio. The program, uh, com the program's convener, Dr. Mahmoud Bukhermaina, who is currently in the UK, will be joining our discussion through um, Skype or phone, whichever the network permits. I am Zulaisa Alusu Mustafa, your presenter for this program. And the topic for today is um, using medical imaging to understand diseases. We have with us Dr. Muhammad S. Ahmadu, BSc Human Anatomy, MBBS, FMCR, Consultant Radiologist. He is also the HOD, University of Medjugorje Teaching Hospital, a board member, Faculty of Radiology, National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria. Doctor, we are really excited to have you here with us. I appreciate being here with you. Yes, thank it's you. It's nice being with you. Uh, let me get through to Dr. Booker, so, uh, Dr. Mahmoud. Dr. Mahmoud, good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm all right, ready over here. I can hear you. Fine. Yeah. Um, doctor, we'll begin the questions with um, asking you, what is medical imaging? Well, medical imaging uh, also combined as a, or otherwise known as radiology is a branch of medicine that uses uh, radiation to diagnose diseases, diagnose and treat diseases. And this uh, radiation could be ionizing and non-ionizing. So we have uh, various imaging modalities as the means by which we use to see through the human body. That's basically in summary what uh, radiology or medical imaging means. So under radiology or medical imaging you have other subspecialties, various subspecialties of which uh, radiography is also part of it. It falls under it because they produce the images and uh, is more of the technical aspect of the uh, medical imaging. So that's a summary of it. Well, I, we used to have what we call scatter radiation in radiology. Basically, we don't have a, a uniform or determined uh, way that we spend a day as a radiologist. But basically, we have to remember a radiologist is a clinician, is an academic, and then as well as an administrator. So basically, a typical day runs like this. We start work by 8. And then 8 to 9, for instance, what we usually do in most days is that we have uh, what we call uh, morning conferences, especially with the radiology residents who are under training. And sometimes we go for morning lectures with the undergraduate students, that's the MBBS, uh, the dental students, and sometimes other paramedical students that we teach. Then from 9 to 12, basically, we take film reporting. This film reporting will include uh, reporting x-rays, that's radiographs, uh, magnetic resonance imaging that have been produced, uh, then a computer tomography, and then sometimes we also go and do some special radiological procedures in the morning. And that is if there are no other administrative issues. You know, like I said, a radiologist is a clinician, is an academic, and then as well as an administrator like I am, I'm the head of the department, so I combine a lot of things. Basically, a day runs, uh, I can't determine what, but uh, uh, like, uh, like, like, like I said, 9 to 12, that's what we do. And then from 12 to 2, sometimes we take uh, some administrative things, including meetings, and uh, from 2 to 4, basically, work closes by 4 in Nigeria. We we'll go for afternoon conferences, especially with radiology residents, uh, teach them, train them. And then sometimes we also have afternoon lectures with especially radiography students, BSc anatomy students, and other health-related students that are pursuing their undergraduate uh, degree. But that not, doesn't mean that by four we close, but uh, usually from four you go into looking at what you have uh, as especially part of your research work. Uh, you have to read as well, your continuous medical education. 
basically up to around six and then uh, you close and then you go and uh, meet your family. That's basically a summary of how a day runs as far as a radiologist is concerned. Okay, doctor. Why is radiology important? Well, radiology is very important. Mm. To treat a patient, we don't, most diseases are deep within a patient's body. Radiology is a conduit or means or medium by which you see through the human body. Radiology is so important in clinical aspect, in academic aspect, in research and also in community service. Radiology is important in making diagnosis. Now let's for instance, let's say for instance a patient comes to you looking at a tropical setting that we are in uh, coughing, having high fever, drenching night sweats, you can conclude that this is actually what is wrong with the patient. You have to go and do chest x-ray. It is that chest x-ray that will now tell you what is really happening deep inside the patient's body, for instance. And uh, commonly we make diagnosis like uh, a patient coming with uh, high fever, drenching night sweats, weight loss, uh, cough, we most of the times get diagnosis that is likely to be pulmonary tuberculosis or PTV. Without imaging, you may just be going here and there, though there are other means of investigating the patient. But radiology is so important because it sees through the human body. It tells you what is actually wrong. A, com a patient coming to you with fracture, for instance, fracture of the bone, you can determine what kind of fracture right. you have. It determines the kind of treatment you offer to a patient. So radiology is so important in uh, medicine that it can't, medicine cannot do without radiology, of course. Mm. That's interesting. Can you tell us ways in which radiological methods are being used to diagnose cases in, for instance, northeastern Nigeria? Yeah, yes, um, let me give you an example. Uh, we have rising cases of diabetes mellitus, we have rising cases of hypertensive patients, patients come down with complications of these two diseases. And one of the commonest complications of these two diseases is stroke, that's paralysis of one side of the body. Radiology using, for instance, magnetic resonance imaging, that's MRI and computer tomography, can make near accurate diagnosis of stroke of a patient. That's if there is bleeding within the brain of a patient with diabetes and a stroke. So this is a classical example of how radiology can make a diagnosis using the available imaging analysis. And then for instance, we have, uh, we know our settings, like you said, Borno State, we have high level of insurgency, though it's uh, waning down, it's reducing. Now, I made mention of uh, trauma. Now, patients, these patients come with trauma, be it blood abdominal trauma or obvious traumas that come with bleeding. So you can make diagnosis, for instance, blood abdominal, uh, blood abdominal uh, trauma. You can use ultrasonography to determine whether there is a rupture of internal organs, for instance, the spleen, the kidneys, or the liver. You can also make diagnosis using ultrasound scan. And then you can also conventionally use x-ray to make diagnosis, especially this patient with, that come with gunshot uh, uh, pellets within their body. You can make diagnosis of injury to the soft tissues or the brain itself in form of fractures. Well, um, don't forget, listeners, this is a live program, so you can call in and ask our guest doctor what uh, you can in terms of what we are talking about. The number you can get through us is 080-2441-9254. 2408024419254. We'll open up our lines in due course. Um, doctor, yes. what Dr. Mahmoud asked you and what you just said about MIR and so mm -hmm. it made me um, ask the next question. Uh, so many people don't understand the difference between MIR and CT scan. Can you tell us about it? Okay, both of them are imaging modalities. Like I made, uh, mentioned that radiology is a branch of medicine that uses radiation to make diagnosis. This radiation can be ionizing and non-ionizing. Yeah, ionizing, yes, uh, computer tomography uses ionizing radiation. Radiation, these are forms of energy that can have the ability to penetrate through the human body. And when they penetrate, 
the sweat we have uh, behind a patient that has, has a radiation pass through him, a image receptor. So computer tomography, especially in terms of making diagnosis of bone diseases, bone diseases is very good in making diagnosis of bone diseases. While MRI uses non-ionizing radiation, so in terms of safety to the patient, mm. MRI is safer. Than CT scan. Than CT scan. But they yeah. both diagnose the, the same kind uh, Yes, yes, they both diagnose diseases. MRI is good for soft tissues. Let's say soft tissue means patients that come with uh, maybe more, uh, uh, let's say, cancer of the muscles, uh, maybe cystic diseases within the brain, and the brain itself making diagnosis of soft tissues is better to employ MRI to yes. making diagnosis. Okay. Then let's say, for, for instance, if a pregnant woman comes to you and you are in dilemma, you want to make diagnosis of a particular disease. So rather than going for CT, especially in early pregnancy, it's better to go and do MRI because MRI is relatively safer. It does, not, it does not use uh, ionizer radiation in making uh, for producing images. Fine. What the doctor asked you yet again um, leads me to my next question. You talked about um, diseases that you have encountered. I want to ask you this question. What diseases do you personally encounter in your practice? When we encounter personally, personally yes. diseases that we commonly encounter in our settings, mm. most of them are like in pediatrics, mm. it's more of infections. Okay. In adults, we have infections and trauma and some other sort of diseases. But commonly, uh, like I made example of uh, uh, pulmonary uh, tuberculosis. This is one of the commonest diseases that we encounter. And then we also encounter diseases in pediatric age group that relates to malnutrition because of our settings. Patient comes with so many diseases, abdominal cases, uh, we also encounter urinary diseases, especially in this hot weather that we are in now, patients coming with uh, inability to pass urine, cases of urinary stones, maybe kidney stones, bladder stones. There are a lot of diseases that we encounter, especially in our tropical setting, that, are, that warrant uh, imaging. Yeah. So I was just wondering, uh, Dr. Muhammad, yeah. uh, because so over here we see a lot of different things uh, in the UK in terms of techniques that they use. So I'm not sure what role do you feel advanced technology is playing in radiology, maybe especially from the context of Nigeria? Well, the world is going into artificial intelligence and some other sorts of new uh, emerging technologies. That I can talk about it. But one thing I have to tell uh, everyone, and especially the public, is that radiology is technology. Any, any development in technology, you find that radiology easily meanders and gets through it. So without technology, radiology cannot prosper. Uh, in terms of our settings as Nigerians, one of the challenges that we have is our inability to move with the developing uh, the developed world. So uh, despite that, uh, we have some challenges, but what I will say in summary is that technology is so important in radiology that radiology cannot do without uh, technology. And then the settings of uh, the setting of Nigeria, we know our challenges, so many challenges uh, in terms of research, clinical services, academic services. So we have a lot of challenges, but that's not that we are trying to move with the uh, <coughs> developed nations. Okay. Um, doctor, this is a personal question again. Can you give us an example of an interesting case or project that you have worked on and um, your role in helping to achieve a positive result? Well, uh, with I have worked, especially <coughs> during my, towards the end of my postgraduate training, I worked with my teachers, uh, my supervisors, uh, Professor Hijo, Professor Tanger, uh, Dr. Zeno, and other uh, senior colleagues that we worked on. Uh, we realized that, like I said, diabetic patients, hypertensive patients, and sickle cell patients come down with stroke. So I, we worked on a project that we use ultrasound scan to scan the carotid arteries, that the arteries that take blood to the brain. Uh, 
we scan the arteries to detect whether there is athero, atheroma, that's fat collection that blocks the artery. So we realize that uh, in diabetics, about 3 to 4 percent of patients with diabetes come down with atheroma formation in their arteries. Mm -hmm. And there are carotid, well, there is internal and external carotid arteries. And this atheroma, that's fat collection, blocks the artery, and blockage of the artery mm -hmm. can lead to what sure. decrease loss of blood to the brain, mm -hmm. which would actually may ultimately lead to ischemic strokes. Mm -hmm. uh, I will work on that, and we also work on the, uh, a project like uh, looking at the pattern of uh, back pain, mm -hmm. the pattern that patients back pain and then neck pain. You know, most of us now have back pain and neck pain using MRI and, and, and CT. Mm -hmm. We also worked on that. Uh, we recently uh, also worked with. Uh, with other colleagues to determine the perception, that is the knowledge, attitudes, and uh, practice of patients that come, that's their waiting time. When they come for investigations in the department, we try to look at how they perceive the waiting time, the waiting time, they, the time they spend before a procedure is done, and then the result is passed. So we have so many work that we are working on. And we have collaborators, especially for medical radiography, mm -hmm. uh, colleagues, uh, including people like Dr. Farate, who is a nuclear uh, medicine specialist. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of uh, projects that we worked on. Mm -hmm. mm, that's interesting. Yeah. So maybe in such case, I should ask you this, because uh, normally people uh, imagine that if you're a clinician, you only see the patients and treat them. Mm. But based on what you've taught us so far, it appears that you can have time to do research as well. Can you elaborate on that? Y yes. Uh, if if you really want to advance knowledge, teaching alone cannot advance knowledge. Of course, when you teach, you teach a group of individuals. But if you don't go into research in whatever field, that specialty is likely to die off prematurely. So we have to make time, like I said, we are clinicians, we are academics, and then as well as administrators. So we usually make time uh, to make sure that we input, especially to those who are training, the habit of or inculcating the love of research, because research keeps a specialty moving ahead of time or with time. So without research, I don't think any specialty can prosper and there won't be any development. The machines, like I said, we move with technology. The machines that are being produced each and every year, when you go to uh, scientific conferences, whether within Nigeria or outside Nigeria, every year you see newer modifications. You see modifications of imaging equipment, and this is as a result of our research. And with our research, you can know whether what you've developed is working or not working. I think research is very, very important, in especially radiology, because it's uh, a technology, uh, uh, is, is a technology-dependent uh, medical specialty. Okay. Uh, we we'll would open up our lines and give the um, callers five minutes to ask questions. We have like three minutes for the doctor to answer the questions because we have time um, constraints. Um, the number you can get through us is zero eight zero two four four one nine two five four. Hello? 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 Yes, you can ask your question, Doctor. All right. So before before we get the next question, I was thinking uh, if I should go a little bit personal as well. Um, what event or series of events led you to pursue the field of radiology as a profession? Well, uh, uh, since we call it a personal question, I can also tell you a personal answer. Mm. Well, what actually led me to radiology is uh, basically during my undergraduate training as a human anatomy student. I've been wondering, uh, there was a course we take in radiology department, that was way back 1998. We came for the course, and I met one uh, who is presently the chief medical director of University of Medical Science, Professor Brahman Tire. He was talking anatomy so well that I got impressed that this is actually where I will use my human anatomy knowledge. So that started my my love for radiology. 
And uh, when I came into radiology, I realized that there is a lot of things that you have to do. You have to pursue so many things. And then uh, I realized, I realized that... Uh, we will take the questions, Doctor. Hello? Okay. Hello. Good afternoon. Afternoon. Who is speaking and where are you calling from? Yes. We can hear you. And the thing that we talked about, we talked radiology, I was very excited. I was even likely to study that mm. That's what. Mm. She is excited because she's thinking of studying radiology. Okay. <laughs> is it radiography or radiology you want to study? Radiology. Radiology. Radiology, okay. Mm -hmm. Basically, what we have to understand is the difference between radiography and radiology. I do we work together with, uh, uh, under a, the same department, especially in the teaching hospital. Okay. Radiography, medical radiography, you start pursuing it, though radiology is postgraduate. You have to be a medical doctor, you have to pass through a series of examinations, the primary examination, part one, and part two, hmm. before you even go and become a radiologist, not to talk about sub-specialization. Hmm. But medical radiography, you start from the university. Hmm. Hello, yes? Who is Hello. Good afternoon. Afternoon. Where are you calling from? Okay. Okay, I'm going to do this for you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to do this for you. You're also a future radiologist. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I usually intervene in a program where I do a study on it. I like to make a video. Well, I appreciate that. This is a fast question. This is a fast question. Okay. Well, I unfortunately, time is not on our side. I think um, our DCA is telling me that we have just one minute, so we can take um, calls, but hopefully for next week we are still inviting you. You come because we have so many questions for you, Doctor, yeah. and um, I think it would be better if you come back to the studio next week so that we pick up from where we... Yeah. Yes. Just before you finish, maybe it would be good if we, uh, if Dr. Muhammad, you can give an advice to uh, a certain scientists, radiologists, and uh, clinicians. In a minute. Um, the shortest advice I can give anybody who wants to aspire to be a scientist, not just radiologist, is you have to be hardworking, number one. You have to keep the dream alive. If you want to pursue something in life, you have to be patient. You have to persevere. You have to also remember God Almighty through prayers. This is as simple as I can give advice to anybody who wants to be a scientist, especially the younger generation. They have to be. You have to be very patient and hardworking, and you have to persevere because it's not easy. Whoever you see above must have gone through so many obstacles below. Mm. So he, ha he or she must be hardworking and persevere through the process. Thank you, Doctor. Um, that uh, was a, a, an interesting discussion with Dr. Muhammad S. Amadou, HOD, University of Nidukuri Teaching Hospital, Radiology Department. Uh, don't forget, our sponsors for this program is Science Communication Hub Nigeria in partnership with Train in Africa and Swift Relief Foundation also supported by the University of Sussex, UK.